Hey Stingers, how we doing? So last night I was quite busy and I was up pretty early in the morning um, housing all these scorpions. Now I still have to give them some sphagnum moss um, and a feed, but I'm going to have to move them all aside up here for now as I've had a couple of um, parcels arrive with some tarantula slings as far as I'm aware. Uh, I think there's some um, Lakeland Stranuses and SP2s. There might be something else. I'm not sure at this point. <clears throat> Once I have that lot out of their um, parcels, I'll house them up and put them aside again and we'll move back to the scorpions if I have time and it's not too late and we'll just give them some sphagnum moss, a little bit of spray uh, and if we can we'll give them a feed at the same time because um, some of the big girls and big boys in there are pretty impressive. The box here already has enclosures with scorpions in it um, because they'll be in my personal collection for the new bug rooms when they're finally finished. But I'll show you them a little later because the enclosures are kind of cute. Um, but they are a good size because, you know, I will be still stretched for space. I can always add more rooms to the bug rooms if possible. There is another half of a shed there I can utilize if it ever comes to the point. But yeah, we're struggling with getting hold of some uh, new tarantulas for my collection and for everyone else out there. Um, I've had to go and buy anything else I can basically get my hands on. Because, because I don't want to finish these bug rooms and find that I've just got a huge empty spot. So I, yes, I am building my personal collection at the moment. Um, but I'm trying to do my best for everyone else out there. Uh, but please bear with me. Uh, give it a month or two and everything will pick up. I'm, I'm sure by the end of this year I'll have a huge variety of inverts and arachnids for everybody. All kinds, you know, not just tarantulas, but I'll have tra more trapdoors. Hopefully some more species of wolf spiders because some of them are pretty impressive and I would love to get myself a two-toned wolf spider. Uh, being that they are in WA, it, it creates complications in getting them uh, unless, you know, unless someone over there has bred them themselves. I am looking into moving into some centipedes. Um, I usually just do tigers or you know green forms and maybe some neuters like I have at the moment, uh, the blue legs. But they're you know I just I have the space now so I can expand. Uh, but the stick insects, I'll probably only keep maybe two or three species. Uh, but you know if I'm able to create the bug room how I want it, that could change. I don't want to overload myself at the start, otherwise. I'm not going to be able to keep up <laughs> with my life schedule outside of this hobby. All right, let's get stuck into it because I don't know how many is in there. It might take a while, um, but I'll probably do a time lapse here and there just to speed it up for everyone back at home. Um, but yeah, let's just do it. Now, this is all just mainly temporary housing. Uh, I didn't really uh, prep myself to getting so many different specimens. Um, but yeah, once I've moved into the bug room, I'll be uh, buying more enclosures, something a little bit more suitable for even uh, livestock, like some of these are, which are being kept aside for you guys. Um, but you know, I'm not a huge fan of leaving everything in these, you know, in these containers. They are suitable for short term, uh, but long term, you know, I would, I would rather something this big, but you know, in the end, it will take up a lot of space. And I really have to plan this shed out. Um, like even the shelves alone, I'm planning out to be built around the new terrariums I have. Maybe at this end of the video, I'll run over to the shed and I can give you guys an update on what has been done, where I'm up to. Um, but yeah, we'll just we'll just roll along with this video, you know. All right, let's 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 move all these guys up on top of the shelf for now and just get them out of the way because I'm gonna need some room for these little ones. I'll just put the camera down. Otherwise, otherwise I'm doing it all with one hand and, well, that's just time consuming. You've got two hands. Might as well use them, eh? All right, let's do it. <laughs> that's the great thing about my new bug shed is that I've put in plenty of LED lights, so I'm not going to have issue with lighting. Well, you know, that's what I'm hoping, but you never know until it's done. Uh, the cool thing is my incubator room actually has color changing LED lights in the roof. So if um, if I got a few invertebrates or arachnids in there with egg sacs, for instance, or, you know, with baby or with youngs, or even going into molt, this room will be kept at a um, constant temperature uh, to help these creatures uh, stay 
nice and warm, not too hot, just warm and a little bit humid if needed. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the LED lights, I'm able to change to say, we we'll say red for now. So uh, if I turn on and on, on and off the light, it will stay red until I want it changed, which is great. So I can walk into the room and find that I'm not going to disturb anybody uh, because you don't want that happening. You want them to feel safe and comfortable and nice and dark. Okay, that's enough rambling on. Let's, just, let's move over here and just do this. So yeah, as you can see, these enclosures are a little bit adorable. Um, I was hoping they were a bit bigger. Uh, maybe I should have checked on the size or been a bit more thorough on what size I wanted when purchasing them, but um, they will still be quite suitable. Now there is a Eurotacus Elongatus uh, male in here, otherwise known as the Flinders Range male. Um, give me a second and I'll get him out. Now as you can see, he's just, he's just, he's huge. Now I would say, um, come on back up before you fall off. Now I would say he's at least 100 mil. Sorry, I did it again. Look, I did it. Uh, 100 millimeters, for goodness sakes. 100 millimeters. Now, when you're measuring a scorpion, uh, I can't think of the technical terms right now because it, it's tired. All right. Um, but when you're measuring a scorpion, uh, you're going from basically the front of the face to the last segment of the tail to the end. Uh, you don't include the stinger, though. Uh, just the front of the face and the singer. Now a lot of people think that you class the uh, pedipalps, which is basically their claws here uh, But you don't class them. Actually, that's a good question. Why don't we class them? Then again, it just makes a lot of difficult. So you always go from head to tail <laughs> I should write a script Hmm, maybe then I'll know what to say. Doesn't matter. All right, we'll put him back because he's getting a little itchy. now I find it's best to grab them by their last uh, segments on either side of the stinger so the sting is unable to uh, bend back or sorry bend forward uh, to be able to sting you and then you're, you're pretty much safe now please I've had quite a few people lately asking me now can you uh, cut off the stinger this is a definite no especially for the Eurotacus uh, scorpions or any desert scorpions because they do use their stinger uh, to kill their prey what are you doing and sometimes the toxin does help liquefy the insides of their, say, cricket, roach, woody, whatever. Um, but please do not do it, even for a rainforest, because a rainforest, they do use their petal pelps um, and not their stinger. The stinger is pretty much the last option. Some still do, I have found while uh, feeding them over the years. But it, it, I still recommend just don't do it. Just, just don't do it, please. Um, but I do appreciate everybody that has asked me, um, because... Hey, if you ask them the question, you don't know the answer, so you might as well ask, and I'm happy to answer when I got time to. <laughs> right, back to it. Um, but yeah, these closures will be mainly used for all my scorpions. Uh, some trap doors and funnel webs I will use in these. Now, I've only got 40 of them, so I'm going to use them just for the scorpions for my personal, personal stock and breeders. <laughs> But they're quite suitable. Like when, once uh, I have bought some more substrates today because I didn't have enough. I thought I had a couple blocks, but I didn't. Uh, but I will increase her, sorry, his substrate by at least another couple inches. Uh, so once I've actually placed a rock in there, she, she'll be able to um, create a, an, a home underneath to feel more secure. And if she's really wanting to, she can make a short burrow. Uh, flinders aren't always huge on making a burrow. They prefer just to hide under a nice flat rock like the uh, Eurotacus black rocks. Uh, I'm trying to build my uh, Flinders breeding program. Um, there's only a couple other people that are doing this themselves. Uh, I know my mate down south is doing, it in, is doing it to try and grow the population amongst the hobby with just uh, personal bread. Flinders now it does take a very long time and once you find out it takes about 18 months during gestation period um, basically they grab it for 18 months and that's a very long time to wait and if you don't know if the mating was successful well it's a very long time to wait <laughs> but it needs to be done uh, let's get to the parcel all right little ones I'm just gonna put them down here
Well, I'm not sure what they are at the moment. Um, I'm pretty sure there must be some slings in there. Maybe... Ah, wait, I do have a couple of tiger peelings coming. So it could be them. Ah, so from what I can see, we've got some more SP2s, slings. Um, maybe some Stranuses in there. Ah, yes. A few more tiger peas from what I can see. Not sure how many, but we'll get in there... We'll get in there soon and have a look. Now let's just get them out. I just spent last night using up all, pretty much a lot of my spare tubs for the scorpions. Now I've got to figure out a way to house, I think there's like maybe 60, 70 spiderlings here uh, and some uh, peedlings. Alright guys, I'm going to be back in probably about 15-20 minutes. I'm going to go into the shed. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've got some more of these containers laying around because I think at this time I'm going to have to because I just don't have any more enclosures I can use. Alright, I think I've found enough enclosures now. They are dirty still because I do have some tubs out there that I haven't got around to cleaning the enclosures that are inside them so give me another 20 minutes i'll have all these cleaned and sanitized and ready to go for all the new little ones when i get around to them i'm just going to put them in dally cups for now um just so i can get a count and figure out how many enclosures i need to make up um but yeah let's just keep going i guess all right, stingers, I'm back. I've got the deli cups ready to put them into. Uh, I've got the enclosures all cleaned and sanitized, um, but I'll wait to set them up until I've got the uh, exact number of how many slings are in here. Uh, where do we want to start? Let's, let's just get the tape off all these guys and get them ready. Oh, these strands look like a nice size. See it in there? What? Oh, how many in here? Two. Let's be two. So you got to go there. <gasps> oh, Rubicetta. Oh, nice. Oh. oh no. All right. I'm gonna have to get this one out first. Looks like she's gone into a molt. Um, not good because there is not enough space in there. Things out of the way. Alright, I've got that Rubicetta in a, basically like a little uh, ICU incubator kind of deal. Um, so, just raised her humidity up a little bit. Uh, gave her a good spray, not her itself, but uh, the enclosure around her. Sorry, the substrate around her, just to help with the humidity. Um, and hopefully she'll pull through because she looked like a decent size uh, juvenile. Um, but hopefully she'll be okay. We'll check on her later. And I'll probably give you guys an update if she has made it or if she didn't. Um, well, we know which one we prefer. Uh, but let's get this other one open for now. XP2. These are nice little size, little juvies almost. I'm sorry guys, I'm going to have to... There we go. I think these guys are... Oh, there's another Rubicetta. Alright, I think she's doing okay, so we'll have a look at her later. Another Stranus. Oh, look at the size of her now. She's a decent sized juvenile. And another Stranus. There she is. Alright, now they're all out of their parcels. Let's get, a, let's get a final count of how many there actually is. Now, I think he has written on the side, but um, I'll prefer to get him out just in case. But yeah, let's... Let's roll on. Do this. Alrighty, I've already seen one just hiding right there. Hello, little dude. Alright, let's just gently put them in there. There they are. Come on. In you go. They're a little adorable, aren't they? Alright, come on, cutie. Let's get you in the deli cup for now.
Who's got a fat booty? Yeah, you do. Alright. Okay, Stingers, so um, I'm going to speed this up a little bit and just do a hyperlapse video because there's about 50 SP2s there and you don't need to see me uh, <laughs> try to find them all through the moss for the next hour or so. So I'll do a hyperlapse video and we'll just get them out and then we'll move on to the Stranuses and we'll get nice and close to them. By doing a hyperlapse video, that just benefits me because that means I can spend my time doing this while watching uh, Final Space. Alright, that's the SP2s all in the... Deli cups for now. Um, I got some of the Rupides tiger forms here. Now they're a bit adorable. All right, we'll just get this ruby out of here. There she is. There she is. Hello, sweetheart. Oh, the girl has fat booty too. Here you go. Good girl. Good. Get to the Stranuses. They're just a beautiful size juveniles. Okay, put her aside. Oh, come on. Come on. There you go. I'm going to close it up because she's very active. Stay in, please. Come on. Oh. You are asking too much of us. Now you feel too judged? Now, you're a great librarian, and I'm sure... Are you mad? Because I think I've been more than fair. Oh, no, 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 no. We have to dig it out. You don't want to be first. Now, who can we offend with? Oh, second back. What happened with that sweet and melody? Two thousand years later. All right, that's all the Stranuses in their deli cups too. So I'll quickly get rid of this mess, and um, I'm not going to worry about housing them for this video. We'll check on a couple of the scorpions, and we'll leave it there for tonight. And well, not just yet, but we'll leave it there when we get to it. Um, but yeah, let's just tie this up. Uh, but I did say I would get up close to a couple of the scorpions, so I'll grab them and we'll see if we can give them a feed while we're here anyway. Come on, sweetheart. She's quite friendly, isn't she? All right. 
she is not interested, but that's okay. Um, I'll just scoop her up. Come on, sweetie. Go. Nice and easy. Now, the Flinders are quite a docile species, which is awesome. Because if you are looking to be able to handle your scorpions, Flinders are just amazing for it. And as you can see, she's not too, not too phased about me even patting her. But we'll put her back. There you go, sweetheart. There you go, good girl. Alrighty. Yeah. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a male. And I'm going to put a male right beside her. Um, and see, I'm not going to try and mate them. It's not the right time of the year. Uh, but just so you guys can see the difference between the two of them. Uh, but give me a second and I'll find a male. Alright, so here we have a male. I'll just grab him. Now, as you can see, they have an extremely uh, long tail. Um, the name Elongatus refers to the male's tail, or mainly the uh, last, elong uh, last elongated uh, segment there, as you can see in the center. Um, but I'll pop him down next to her. As you can see, the female has a much shorter tail um, and a much broader, I'm sorry, more robust and darker uh, exoskeleton, where the male is a lot lighter. And as you can see with the last segment of its tail, it is quite long. Each segment is a lot longer than the male's. That's all right, come here, buddy. But again, the flinders are a great species to handle. Now they can be a bit clumsy when handling them, so make sure you always, there we go, always have your hand nice and stable, because still you don't want them to fall, you don't want to cause injury. But yeah, after a while, the sting is right there. <laughs> after a while, you get pretty relaxed, and you learn how they are. All right, let's put them back. Alright, well, let's put <laughs> There we go. These two are both mature. Um, I would say she's about... She'll be about 90 to 100 millimeters. Uh, with this guy's really long tail, I'm going to say that he's at least... At least 110. Has to be. This dude here is at least 100. All right, these guys don't seem to be very hungry today. Let's put the lids back on these guys. No. Now, don't worry guys, these enclosures aren't fully set up yet because I ran out of substrate and didn't have enough for everybody. Um, so I'll be adding some more and a little bit of sand into the core peat. But uh, there will also be a rock in here. It is essential for flinders to have a rock. Uh, they'll drink most of the moisture that is on those on that rock, not actually the sphagnum moss itself. It's also crucial because it does help with mating. Um, and sometimes if the scorpion does feel nice and safe and secure, um, they will molt on top of the rock as well. But guys, I'm going to call it tonight because I'm quite tired and I do have a lot more to do. Got to get their homes all set up and get them all housed. Um, and I'll probably end up finishing everybody off uh, tomorrow. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't subscribed, hit the button down below um, because I love the support and it's always great to see new subscribers. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.